Hello, my name is Zach Gibbs and I'm a content developer within education services inside Juniper Networks. And today we will be discussing the configuring chassis cluster interfaces with JWeb Learning Byte. All right, so here's our example. I want to point out a few things in the topology first. We have VSRX1 and VSRX2, which are part of the chassis cluster. Those are the two nodes. VSRX1 is node 0, VSRX2 is node 1. And then we have the two nodes connected through the EM0 interface. That's the control port. And then we will need to configure the FAB0 and FAB1 interfaces. And I'll talk about that in a minute. Next, we have the GIGI004 and GIGI704, which will be the child interfaces for Wreath1. Then User1 connects in to the VSRX devices using Wreath1. And then GIGI003 and GIGI703 are a part of Wreath0, that is the child interfaces for Wreath0, which then connects the VSRX devices to the internet. All right, so the criteria that we want to meet for the example, we want to use JWeb to configure these interfaces. We need to configure redundancy for the fabric interfaces using GIGI000, GIGI001, GIGI700, and GIGI701. And then we need to place the Wreath0 interface in redundancy group 1. Wreath1 needs to go into redundancy group 2. And then we need to provide internet access for user 1. So one thing I do want to point out here is that we aren't configuring any sort of interface or IP monitoring. And the reason behind that is it's just going to make this learning byte a little too long if I were to do that. And so there, I will have another learning byte that will cover how to configure IP monitoring and interface monitoring with chassis clustering through the JWeb interface. So with that, let's go ahead and jump to the JWeb interface. All right, so here is the JWeb interface. Note that we are logged into VSRX1 and it shows that it's node zero. We are in the configuration workspace. You can see that by mousing over the ribbon on the left. And then we need to go to the chassis cluster, cluster configuration workspace. And under this workspace, we have a few different settings. We have the node settings and the HA cluster settings. Now the node settings, that is configured and set up when you set up the chassis cluster. We can see here, that node 0, especially if I change the arrangement to show node 0 first here, we see that node 0 is the primary, we see that node 1 is the secondary. So great, everything looks good there. So let's go to HA cluster settings and we can see that there's nothing currently configured here. And so what we need to do is we need to first configure some redundancy groups. And we can click the add button for the redundancy group section that is. And let's add a redundancy group. We need to add redundancy group 1. We can allow preemption of primary ship, that's fine. I'm not going to worry about gratuitous ARP count. I believe the default is 5 if you don't specify anything here. We're going to give node 0 priority of 200, node 1 a priority of 100. And here's where we would configure interface monitoring or IP monitoring. And like I said, I'll say that for a, another learning byte. Click OK. And then let's go ahead and add another. Redundancy group 2. Do the same thing. So this makes this an active passive cluster by doing it this way because both redundancy groups are going to be primary on node 0. Then we can add some interface information. Now here we need to add the fabric interfaces. So gigi 0 slash 0 slash 0 for fab 0 slash 1. And then for fab 1 we can add the gigi slash 7 slash 0 slash 0 and then gigi 7 slash 0 slash 1. And now we can configure our redundant interface options. We're going to configure wreath 0, give it an IP address of 11.11.1 slash 24. We're going to set that to redundancy group 1, not worry about LACP. Click add. And then we're going to add wreath 1. We're going to give it the IP address of 10.1.1.254 slash 24. Redundancy group 2, and click Add again. And then we can click OK. And that's added. However, we are not ready to commit the configuration just yet. Uh, doing this configuration here sets up the redundancy groups, the wreath interfaces, the fabric interfaces, and that's great. However, it doesn't set up the wreath count that we need. because You have to specify how many wreath interfaces you need in the configuration. So we need to jump to CLI tools to configure that. We need to go to the CLI editor. So we actually have to get into the editor, so you do need to know a little bit of CLI to do this, even through JWeb. 
And then we scroll down until we find chassis cluster, which is here. Hit enter to add a new space. Then we can tab or space over. And then we can type in wreath count, say two, because we're doing two wreath interfaces. And then we can click commit on the side. Click OK. Get success. Click OK again. And then we need to click commit up top. And it's already committed itself, but JWeb, it needs that second commit to get rid of that blinking orange light up top. So, okay, we did that. That's great. So let's go ahead and check out the interfaces, see what we have. So let's look at our, our wreath interfaces. So we go to wreath zero, click go, and it shows down. That's not what we want to see. Now, wreath one is going to show the same thing. And there's a reason behind it. And I'll let you know here in a second. See that wreath one is also down. And the reason behind this is we haven't associated the child interfaces with the appropriate wreath interfaces yet. So we need to do that. But to do that, we need to go to CLI tools. And then we can go to point and click CLI. It's a little easier than using the CLI editor. The point and click CLI section doesn't allow you to set the wreath count. That's why I didn't use it before. Whereas the CLI editor allows you to do that, that workspace. So with setting the child interfaces to the correct wreath interfaces, we can use the point and click CLI, which is much easier than using the CLI editor. So we need to go to the interfaces, click edit. And then we need to add some interfaces. So we need to click the add new entry selection. And we're going to add in the Gigi 0 slash 0 slash 3 interface. Then we're going to add another entry. We're going to add for the, all the other interfaces, the child interfaces. So this would be Gigi 0 slash 0 slash 4. Then Gigi 7 slash 0 slash 3. then Gigi dash seven slash zero slash four. Now we need to click on the individual interfaces and associate them with the correct wreath interface. So under here we selected the interface and now we can go to the Gigi or Gig Ether options that is click configure and then we can go to the redundant parent section or option and click configure again. And then under here this is Gigi 003 so we want to associate this with wreath zero then click OK. Click OK again and again. Then we go to Gigi 004. Same thing, we need to click on the Gigi Ether or Gig Ether options. Then Redundant Parent options, click Configure. And this one's going to be Wreath 1. Click OK. Click OK again and again. And then we can go to Gigi 703. Click the Gig Ether options, Configure. Configure for a Redundant Parent. And this one goes to wreath zero. Click OK. And then Gigi 704, click the Gigi or Gig Ether options. We've done it parent. And this goes to wreath one. Now click OK, OK, OK again. And then we need to commit the configuration. And we can see the summary of changes, show what's going to put into the CLI. That looks great. We'll click OK. And we can see that we get the results of success. Click OK again. And now we can go back to interfaces, ports, and we can go check on those wreath interfaces. So wreath zero shows up. Perfect. That's what we want to see. So we go to wreath one, shows up as well. That was, that's exactly what we want to see. So we're not done yet though. We need to put these interfaces in a zone. So we select the wreath 1.0 interface. So it's the logical interface. And we need to set this interface in a zone. So we click the edit button. And then we can select zone, and this is going to be in the user's zone. And click OK. Then let's go back to wreath zero. Select wreath 0, .0. click edit, and set this in the internet zone. So everything looks good there. Now you might have noticed that the wreath 0, .0 interface showed down for a second, but now it shows up, and that changes. Uh, just as you put that from one zone to the other. And so we go back to wreath one, we can see the same thing. It shows up as well. So let's go ahead and commit the configuration. All right, the configuration is committed. Well, let's go ahead and jump to user one and see if user one can actually ping the internet server. All right, here is the user device. So let's go ahead and ping that internet server. And perfect, we have reachability to the internet. Everything is as it should be. And so 
Let's go ahead and leave that ping running and we'll jump back to the JWeb interface and look at the flows going through the cluster device. All right, so here is the JWeb interface. Let's go ahead and jump to the monitor workspace. Let's go to the security flow session. Okay, so here we want to select the ICMP option for protocol and let's click search. All right, and so now we see a few different things. I want to point out that there's the virtual chassis number up top. It shows node zero. And we can change that from node zero to node one. And in the flow session information, we can see that we have some traffic that is going through or coming in the wreath 1.0 interface and going out the wreath 0.0, .0 interface. And we can change this to node 1, run the search again. We can see we don't have any sessions there. And that's expected because, remember, as I said earlier, we set up the chassis cluster with redundancy groups to be in an active passive cluster. So everything, all the traffic is currently going through node zero. And also remember, as I did talk about earlier, we didn't configure any form of interface monitoring or IP monitoring. So there is going to be no failover from one child interface to the other currently. And so we'll have to save that type of configuration for another learning byte. So that brings us to the end of this learning byte. In this learning byte, we discussed chassis cluster interfaces and we demonstrated how to set up chassis cluster interfaces using JWeb. So as always, thanks for watching. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.